is that any event causes a real physiological response, but that real physiological response is braided in with our expectation and our understanding of what the response ought to be to create the actual response. So it's sort of real plus perceived equals Actualized. your reality. Yes. Right, exactly. And so um, I love this kind of thing, as you can tell. I'm, I'm eating up the example that, uh, that you gave. I think it's spectacular because what it means is that, no, we can't lie to ourselves. We can't tell ourselves that, you know, drinking water is going to sustain us just as food would for, uh, for five days. We're not going to be hungry. But to some extent, if one understands that, well, you can survive a long time on just water yeah. and you don't need to eat, then you might experience less hunger. That's the way the nervous system works. Well, you can definitely survive longer on just water if you believe that you can survive longer on just water. There is no reason not to believe this. So I was really, really averse to the whole... Rhonda Byrne, the secret woo, sending out messages to the universe. And David uh, positions himself very anti that as well in the book. Um, but you can't deny the fact that the positive thinking has a real physiological impact on what you do. He was talking about, um, they did a study with older people uh, that were past retirement and they asked them to use, what, what sort of words do you associate with getting older? And they split these people into two different groups. And the sort of words that people used perfectly mapped onto how long they were going to live. So the people that used the sort of words alone, frail, fragile, injury, death, they were the ones that lived the shortest. The people that said um, happiness, freedom, liberty, connection, uh, maturity, the, the, those sorts of words were the ones that lived the longest. So your expectations can literally impact your longevity. There's, I, I'm yet to read the book in detail, but I've talked to a guy named Ethan Cross. He wrote a book called He's Chatter. He's been on the show. Oh, He's fantastic. Show a okay. couple of weeks ago. I think that internal chatter world is a very interesting one that neuroscience will eventually have something to, to say uh, about. Uh, I think the most powerful mindset, uh, at least to me, is one that, again, I, I learned from Ali Crum. Um, this is a mindset that in her peer-reviewed studies of different populations, it's clear exists um, universally and people in the SEAL teams, but um, less so, or is perhaps even absent from the general population, sadly. The idea that stress grows you, that challenge grows you, but isn't the only way that you can grow, I think is a very powerful mindset. So, what do you mean, what do you mean by that? So they, she, what they did is she surveyed a bunch of different um, people, different professions, and asked, you know, what's your view of stress? Do you think it grows you, it diminishes your ability, et cetera? So this isn't giving people information. This is asking them for information. And the only group that said stress grows you, the more challenge, the better you get, et cetera. The more stress you experience, the more likely you are to, to succeed was the, this group from the SEAL teams. I don't know if they were new recruits or if they had been in a long time, but that was the, the, the group. I would add to that, that yes, if you adopt the mindset that stress grows you, you're going to be much better off, but also that stress is not the only way to grow in life, right? There's this idea, you know, we have this, and again, there's sort of a gravitational pull of this, like stress grows, you, yes. you know, forward center of mass, or, you know, yep. always be in friction, limbic yep. friction, limbic yep. friction. How about a, a more a, a expansive or nuanced version of that might be, Stress grows you. So if you're under stress, you're back on your heels from something, you think, okay, how can I get flat-footed or even forward center of mass? You tell yourself, stress grows me, stress grows me, stress grows me. But that doesn't mean stress is the only thing that will grow you, right? Learning to cycle between periods of hard work and deep, what I call non-destructive, uh, deliberate reset, right? Um, that's what really works over time. I can attest to that. You know, I, people who just really go out and tie one on in order to, to recover, you can only get away with that for a few years before your body and mind start to give out, right? So find non-destructive ways to reset and also adopt the mindset that stress grows you and adopt the mindset that, you know, there are other ways to grow that don't involve stress. And I think you're set up to have a pretty fantastic life. That's my, you know, simple view of, of the way these things work.